With millions of us now working from home, managers are facing new challenges. Home workers are harder to monitor, and so trust is vital. However, in recent weeks, demand for software to monitor employees has surged in the US. So it seems not everyone is quite so trusting. Whilst companies may argue that it's simply about maintaining productivity, others may feel that we're slipping into a time of creepy surveillance. So, based on these concerns, New York Times journalist Adam Satariano decided to conduct an unusual experiment. I wanted to see how this employee monitoring software worked, and so I thought the best way to do that would just be to turn it on myself. So I downloaded the software on my computer, on my phone, uh, and then I turned it around and gave my manager, my editor in San Francisco, access as well. Just knowing that your supervisor uh, was looking over my shoulder and could see screenshots of what was on my computer screen or a log of what websites I was visiting, you know, that sort of changes how you behave uh, and how you perform your job. Adam used monitoring software Hubstaff. The software is now installed on over 100,000 company machines. It can snap screenshots of your computer every few minutes. Other software on the market can even record your screen and monitor every keystroke. I really did begin to feel that it was intrusive and over the top. It spits out this percentage, which becomes kind of your productivity score uh, that can be used to, to measure you. And so mine were always stubbornly low, uh, which was surprising. I consider myself to be a fairly productive person. I, I am embarrassed to say I looked at that number and I was like, what? Uh, what's going on here? It kind of raises immediate questions like, what is this guy doing? Um, so I should have known better because when he explained that this really only measures the amount of time you're, you know, typing on your device and using your device and your laptop, that explained a lot. But knowing what he what else he was doing felt really weird and intrusive. And it was kind of gross, you know. <laughs> it's like you're not only violating Adam's privacy, you're sort of violating other people's privacy that he was communicating with by extension. Adam's experiment was one manager monitoring one employee and the companies providing the software argue that this isn't a true reflection of how their customers use it. But that's not the reality of what really happens. What really happens is I have 100 employees and there's nobody who's going around looking at the detail of 100 employees. So really what they're looking for is just those basic insights that we talked about. And you know the detail is just there if it's needed, if, if, if something looks off, looks awry. However, in the United States, the sudden surge in demand has started to draw attention to the lack of legal protection for workers' privacy and has also highlighted a power imbalance between employers and employees. Governmental action is necessary to protect workers from being forced to treat their dignity in the employment bargain. In February, I did testify in Congress uh, in the Subcommittee on Labor and Education, uh, and this was an issue that was raised. Uh, this uh, productivity tracking of, employer, uh, of employees and also the fate of the data that is collected. With millions more of us now working from home, Dr. Arjunwa's concerns have become even more pressing. She told us that currently employers are allowed to secretly monitor employees as no federal law exists that requires them to inform their workers about surveillance. It's now a free for all. It's a wild, wild west. Um, everybody is now subject to the same kind of minute monitoring as we previously thought was, you know, the plight of those uh, poor factory or, or warehouse workers. And there's also the issue of employment discrimination that can arise from all this data collection. If you're taking screenshots, you might discover information about the employee 
that you perhaps would not have discovered in a traditional workplace. You might discover the employee is um, of a different um, sexual orientation, so that could also give rise to discrimination on those grounds, or a different religion. But in Europe, where productivity monitoring of employees is still legal, there is much tighter oversight and there are regulations around its use. In Europe, we have to tell people what we're doing and why and ensure that we have lawful grounds for doing that. If an organisation has a legitimate interest in collecting the data for workforce productivity in certain areas, then it will be able to do so without consent. But it will still need to be transparent with its employees, telling them what it's doing and, of course, putting safeguards to protect the data. Maybe we will see this sort of employee surveillance become the norm, but clearly it will stir quite some debate. After all, how would you feel if your boss was monitoring you?